Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Welcome to Module 2 of Don's Drone Rules. This is my proposal for a comprehensive set of practical rules, globally applicable and sensibly balanced. If you haven't already watched my introductory video or Module 1, I strongly encourage you to do so. There's a link in the top corner there. Otherwise, you'll quickly start to wonder what I'm talking about. In this module, I will be talking about airspace management. Let's get into it. A quick reminder that these proposed rules are for discussion purposes only. They're not real. Please understand and follow the real regulations for your country. Airspace management is the second of the four modules of Don's drone rules. And in this module, we'll cover the following areas. Some general airspace rules, and then the three types of airspace that I've defined. Unrestricted airspace, restricted airspace, with a few different flavors, and then finally prohibited airspace. Let's start with some obvious things. Drone operations must always avoid and yield to manned aircraft. Makes sense. And also, drone operations must never interfere with aircraft in established traffic patterns. So landing, taking off, near airports, heliports, or any other form of aerodrome where there's an established traffic pattern. You have to stay away. Makes sense. The next point is both sensible and yet ridiculously not mandatory in today's rules. Manned aircraft must be electronically conspicuous at all times in all airspace. It makes no sense that drone operators are supposed to stay away from manned aircraft and yet the only tools at a drone pilot's uh, disposal are their own ears and eyes. Uh, so I think that manned aircraft must be electronically conspicuous, not just drones. And the drone software, in turn, must alert drone pilots of the presence of manned aircraft in the area based upon these manned aircraft EC signals. And this should be mandatory. DJI has this software on some of their higher-end commercial drones. They've demonstrated it and it works. This should be mandatory. Okay, next part. Um, I'm defining three tiers of airspace. Now, some of these words are used in multiple contexts in, in aviation um, regulations. So keep in mind that when I use the term restricted or un unrestricted, this in the, is in the context of drone operations. So it's a drone operations unrestricted area. So three tiers, and I'll get into each one of them in detail. Unrestricted is generally speaking outside of the area of normal manned aircraft operations. Restricted is inside the area of normal manned aircraft operations or, or other sensitive zones. And then finally prohibited where there's a very high probability of encountering manned aircraft. So around airports and things like that. Let's get into these three tiers. So unrestricted airspace is where drone operations can happen without asking for permission. And typically unrestricted airspace is characterized by the very low risk of encountering manned aircraft. And there's two areas that I've defined for unrestricted airspace. Number one, what we're used to today in most countries, class G airspace, so general class airspace. And in this environment, the airspace is unrestricted up to an altitude of 120 meters above ground level, about 400 feet, or 30 meters above any structure within 100 meters, when, when you're within 100 meters of that structure, whichever is higher. And this is very similar to the regulations in most countries. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. I am using numbers that make sense to people who live on the ground, not nautical miles or anything strange like that. And I'm using 100 meters in this case for the distance from the structure, as opposed to what's defined currently in the Canadian rules, for example, which is for some reason 61 meters. So. The, the, for this first part is totally, totally normal. Same as what we have in most countries today. This next part in non-class G airspace, so this is like controlled airspace, class C, class D, class E stuff. What I'm saying here is that the airspace is still unrestricted to drones up to an altitude of 30 meters above ground level, 
or, and again, I'm consistent with the, the terminology in the class G space, or 30 meters above any structure or obstacle within 100 meters, when you're within 100 meters of it, whichever is higher. In other words, if you're in controlled airspace, you can fly without asking for special permission 30 meters off the ground or 30 meters above uh, a building or a tree or things like that, as long as you're close by those structures or obstructions. I have a little diagram coming up to make this a little more clear. Now, the one exception is that the airspace is in fact restricted. In other words, you cannot take off uh, near airports. And I'm saying a five kilometer uh, radius. And again, please note, I'm using real human numbers, not nautical miles. So five kilometers from an airport or one kilometer from, an, from a heliport and any other identified restricted zones because every country has restricted zones such as prisons or certain government facilities, you know, things like that. Um, and for those, the, for any of those, the controlling agency may provide permission. I've got a lot more information about restricted airspace coming up. Um, and just as a final note here, unrestricted airspace can be temporarily reclassified as restricted, such as during a natural disaster or an emergency situation or a pre-planned congregation of people, such as, a, as concerts, parades or sporting events. All right. So and again, we'll get into those temporary restricted areas in a few moments. Let's look at the diagram. A picture is certainly worth a thousand words, isn't it? So in this diagram, which by the way is not to scale, the blue line that runs at a sort of zigzag across the uh, the middle of the page from left to right is the maximum altitude that a drone can operate in unrestricted. Okay, that's why it says unrestricted in big green letters. And the left hand side of this page corresponds to what we're, we all know and love uh, more or less in, in our, most countries in the world. It's 120, roughly 400 feet above uh, ground level is the standard maximum altitude for a drone. And there's the exception that when you're within close proximity of a tall structure, you can go 30 meters above that tall structure. Now I've rounded these numbers to things that make sense to humans, as I just said. So within 100 meters of that structure, not 61 meters as in the Canadian regulations, you can go 30 meters up. So there's kind of a bubble around tall structures. Now let's look on the right hand side, which is very unconventional, I'll say. The blue line, as you can see, is again the maximum altitude for the drone without having to ask for any permission. And it is defined under Dawn's drone rules to be 30 meters above any structure or obstruction, like this, this incredibly tall tree, um, and in general 30 meters above the ground. As long as you are not near an airport or a heliport, and I've defined that as five kilometer radius or a one, one kilometer radius for heliports. So in other words, if you're in a typical urban environment that has an airport or two close by the city, and as such, the entire city is blanketed with controlled airspace, you should still be allowed under Don's rules, which are not real, by the way, proposed to fly 30 meters over a house to do a real estate shot, to do roof inspection, to do, you know, quick photo of your backyard, to do some dronies of your, your kids at the park, whatever you're going to do with your drone at low altitude. In an altitude in a zone that no aircraft is ever going to be anywhere near. And above those altitude levels, again, it's restricted, which means if you want to use that, you need special permission of the regulatory organization in your country. Let's move on to restricted airspace. So what I've done is I've defined three types of restricted airspace. Air restriction, which is restricted due to the risk of encountering a manned aircraft. Ground restriction due to the proximity to sensitive ground facilities such as prisons or government facilities. And temporary restrictions due to a natural disaster or a congregation of people, that kind of thing. And I'll walk through each of these. As I've said, air restriction zones are restricted due to the risk of encountering manned aircraft, typically in the control zones around airports. 
Now, to fly a drone in an air restriction zone, you must meet all of these requirements. First, the drone must be registered. And if you recall from Module 1, I said that a registered drone also must be electronically conspicuous. Secondly, the pilot must possess either an advanced or professional pilot certificate. Thirdly, the pilot must have permission from the controlling agency. Now, how do you get permission from the controlling agency? My recommendation is that the permission to fly in an air restriction zone will be governed by a universally available app that grants permission based on mission parameters, including location, radius of operation, altitude, drone registration number, and pilot certification number. Very much like the Lance system works in, in the US. It's a perfect application that does exactly this. Within certain parameters, it allows you uh, to fly within restricted zones. Now, this next point is a bit redundant because I've said all of it before, but to emphasize, all aircraft, whether they be drones or manned aircraft, must be electronically conspicuous when flying in an air restriction zone. That will allow software eventually to automate the task of keeping aircraft separate, both drone and, and, and manned aircraft separated, either through merely alerts to the, to the pilot or through automated software. Now, this last point is interesting. What I'm recommending is that the regulatory agency, so the, the aviation ag agency in the country, should be required to define all of these zones electronically, such that drone control software, like DJI Go 4, for example, and other apps can freely access this data and correctly restrict drone operations appropriately. In Canada, at least, the DJI app does not have access to the official uh, aviation uh, maps of where airports are and all the rest. And as such, it's deficient in terms of restricting drone operations appropriately. Ground restrictions are a lot easier. They're, they are restricted due to the proximity to sensitive ground facilities, such as prisons or government facilities. In Canada, these are typically declared as Class F restricted zones, and they exist around, like I said, prisons, um, Parliament Hill, uh, Niagara Falls, d different things like that. I, I realize Niagara Falls isn't a, isn't a prison or a government facility, but it's considered a, a sensitive zone where there's, there should be extreme uh, air, aircraft restrictions. So permission to fly in a ground res restriction zone like this will be provided by the controlling agency defined for each of those zones. The permission should be granted by procedures defined by the controlling agency which in turn will provide waiver codes to unlock any app flying restrictions that happen to exist. And lastly, the regulatory agency is required to define these zones electronically such that drone control software and other apps can freely access the data and restrict drone operations appropriately. The third type of restricted zone is what I call a temporary restriction. Temporary restriction zones are restricted for a period, period of time due to events such as natural disasters, emergency situations, or pre-planned congregations of people. Temporary restrictions due to unplanned events, so there's planned ones and unplanned ones. So for unplanned events, such as natural disasters, earthquakes, forest fires, that kind of thing, or emergency situations, such as large car accidents, riots, acts of terrorism, this sort of thing, they are in place automatically, instantly, and without any requirement for prior notification or any sort of electronic database update or anything like that. As soon as there's an event like that, that area is restricted automatically. Drone flights are prohibited within, and maybe this number is extreme, but I don't think so. Drone flights are prohibited within five kilometers of such events to completely eliminate the risk of collision with emergency or law enforcement aircraft. In any of these situations, you're gonna have piles of helicopters flying in and out. You're gonna have low flying, say forest fire, um, uh, air bom uh, water bombers, and you don't want anything to get in the way of that stuff. So I'm saying five kilometers of any such event, off limits. Uh, now, permission to fly in such 
such situations may be granted or after the fact excused if the flight is directly related to a life-saving operation so for example if you see somebody who's you know drowning due to a flood and you're flying your drone over them to give them uh, advice or help or or pointing where they are to uh, to uh, to someone to go to rescue them I think no one's going to uh, complain and it should be fine but that's extremely exceptional now the second area is pre-planned events so restrictions due to pre-planned congregations of people so this would be concerts parades sporting events that kind of stuff must be approved in advance by the airspace regulatory agency now I've got a little more detail on this in the next module so I don't want to go on to, into this in too much detail here but suffice it to say that this kind of thing must be pre-planned pre-approved it's not automatic and for all of these temporary restrictions the regulatory agency again is required to define well the pre-planned restricted zones at least and long-term unplanned restricted zones electronically so if there's uh, I don't know say it say an earthquake and there's a large area that is under restoration or maybe a nuclear power plant is affected that kind of thing can become a temporary a, a long-term temporary restricted zone and as such should be uh, marked in the publicly available database to ensure that the the drone flying software can uh, react to it appropriately lastly prohibited airspace prohibited airspace is typically the zones where encountering manned aircraft is highly likely such as in the close proximity to airports or heliports zones will be defined based on flight patterns around those airports and heliports focused on the ends of runways and landing takeoff patterns and will be site specific if you're trying to imagine this think about the DJI fly safe maps they have the bow tie patterns as they're called around runways that define the high risk areas for encountering manned aircraft and once again the regulatory agency should be required to define these these areas electronically such that all drone control software and other apps can freely access this data and guide drone pilots appropriately there we go that wraps up module two of Don's drone rules covering airspace management I've covered general airspace rules unrestricted airspace including the 30 meter above ground level and above obstacles even in controlled airspace the restricted airspace rules and prohibited airspace module 3 of Don's drone rules will focus in on the highly controversial proximity to people regulations Don's drone rules my proposal for a comprehensive set of practical rules globally applicable and sensibly balanced see you in the next video